Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today we are presenting our uh, webinar on uh, uh, how, how much automation of the tax flow uh, is possible. Is possible. Uh, and uh, our presenters today uh, is myself, Maria Grigorieva. Uh, I am senior associate with uh, TPA Global. Uh, and uh, Anusha Pande, uh, she's associate with TPA Global, and uh, we are both located in Amsterdam. Uh, and uh, Anusha will present uh, uh, the introduction, uh, and then I will uh, go on to uh, automation do's and don'ts, and in the end we will present a couple of case studies. Yes, so as you can see from the present slide, uh, earlier the CFO's uh, attention was more on tax planning. As a result of that, the companies were more focused on tax planning related policies rather than on compliance. But as a result of BEPS, uh, compliance has become a very important part of uh, the company's uh, activities. And uh, as, you can, as you already know, BEPS Action 13 and uh, now under the TP guidelines, uh, the emphasis is on maintaining three-tier documentation, that is master file, local file, and your CBCR. So the attention is now greatly on meant on ensuring that all your three TP documentations are aligned, and hence uh, CFO's attention is greatly on compliance. As a, as a result of the focus on compliance, what the CFOs now want is uh, to achieve compliance in a cost-effective fashion. And uh, what, when they think of cost-effective, their attention automatically goes to automation. So as a result of automation, uh, and uh, focus on compliance. The tax function is now more of a cost center rather than profit center, which it was at the time of when the focus was on tax planning. So what are the key challenges when you look at tax technology? And I talk about tax technology here because this is what will help you automate your compliance solutions, which is what a CFO wants today. So the key challenges are, as I mentioned earlier, compliance cost that you achieve uh, your, uh, for example, your uh, preparation of your three-tier documentation in a cost-effective fashion. Sourcing of data, this is the second one. How are you going to select your uh, intercompany transactions? That is basically on the basis of the value of the intercompany transactions, which will determine whether you meet the threshold to, for preparation of your master file, local file, and your CBCR. So where are you going to essentially pick this data from? This is another one of your key challenges. Then lastly, it is data reconciliation. So the data that you pick from various sources, such as SAP, ERP, et cetera, should uh, reconcile later on with uh, what you present in your CBCR. So what you have internally in your organization, in your ta in tax returns, for example, should also match the values that you show in your TP documentation. So which areas can the tax technology possibly cover? That is routine compliance, related to preparation of documentation, automated data pickup, that is for data sourcing. That is, you already know the place. Uh, that is basically, instead of having a manual pickup from your tax return or your uh, other sources, this uh, database will automatically pick up the relevant numbers for that year and uh, help you prepare your documentation. And lastly, it is data analytics. That is for your data reconciliation. That is in case you have any outliers possible, it will help you analyze these outliers and help you maybe present in table three of your CBCR. Then what are the benefits that you can expect in this regard? That is cost, cost savings, of course, because the software that you choose, the technology that you choose, will help you prepare your documentation in the most cost-effective manner. Then uh, it will also help you have data integrity and provide useful insights in the outliers that your organization has in terms of uh, the tax data that has been presented in the documentation. Our next slide shows you that uh, you have a company has to undergo a lot of uh, uh, that technology can be for a lot of things. That is for HR info, ERP solutions, legal agreements, inventory, etc. So, do you think that one technology solution is available to offer all these solutions? 
the answer is no there is not one uh, solution which can be said as a magical technology solution that will help you answer all your problems what you have to do in this is uh, see what is most relevant for your organization is it on uh, cit returns or vat compliance so the company itself has to go ahead and determine what is the most important for it at that point in time and go for this technology solution to help uh, simplify that problem the uh, so in this regard what does the company essentially have to do what you have to do is have a tax technology plan now my colleague maria will take you through the various steps uh, involved in a tax technology plan and then uh, go forward with the do's and don'ts in that regard uh thank you anusha so uh yeah i think having tax technology plan is indeed the first and the main do for a uh, tax flows automation because if you don't have a clear plan you might be tempted by uh, the solutions that do not fit your organization or even on contrary uh, are created inefficiently uh i will bring you through all uh, steps of the plan and uh, try to yeah quickly explain what kind of questions needs to be asked and what you should do and you should not do so the first one of course you need to define objectives and in this sense you need to ask yourself what is my main concern uh is it vat is it cp documentation that takes too much time or is it something else because for each organization uh the answer to this question would be different uh you also need to think of uh how you're dealing with this task now are you doing it really purely manually with tons of excel or is your finance is already helping you with some solutions that they have because uh one an important message that i will bring through uh today is that sometimes tax flow automation is not a solution and there are other solutions that you can find within your organization or uh by using other means so the second point is that you need to define uh what you need as your output uh because uh if you know what you need you can then go back and define how the data should be mapped and where you would get this data and actually when the data would be entered and uh, most of the issues that we see uh, during our automation project that sometimes the data at the source is just not available at the granularity for example that you want to have it uh or uh, the finest people uh, just don't want to give you access to the data for any kind of reason it can be also the case uh that uh, your company has multiple ERP, ERP systems and not all software solutions can uh pick up data from this system uh also of course the mapping is important uh due to the fact that uh you need to know what goes where uh because otherwise the analysis would be useless the third point is uh organization and here uh we present the type of the teams that we typically see within the multinational and of course these are just three uh common models but uh, your organization can be a blend of uh, two or even three uh but what we do advise is that you need to understand what kind of organization that you have and from this point also select software uh because not all softwares uh can work properly with uh, let's say teams that are more localized and lots of softwares that we see are mainly uh produced uh, to work with uh, uh, at the central level uh while uh, people locally uh, have only uh certain access it can also be the case that uh if you want to be local teams in the least that would bring you additional cost of software because certain licenses do work uh on the amount of users um also you need to define properly who is doing what in your organization in relation to the objective that you selected here here you see an example of uh, tp documentation workflow but of course this kind of uh are been matrix can be uh produced for any workflow and what is important and what we do advise you do need to involve 
uh, other teams. So not only a tax team, but also legal, finance, and other teams that can you can find useful. For example, business people. Why is it important? Because uh, if you involve uh, these people, one, you can actually uh, already solve certain tasks without automation, but rather just uh, allocating tasks that tax department should not do to the department that should perform this task. And two, if you still would use software, that would help to use it more effectively because, uh, let's say, legal uh, department would uh, deal with uh, legal agreements within the database or will do some checks and balances, uh, and the tax would really do the tax job, so checking numbers and uh, ensuring that the uh, information uh, about transactions is uh, right. Uh, also, we do recommend to involve finance people a lot, because uh, on the one hand, you need their approval, especially if you want to automate certain tax flows related to numbers, uh, but also because they might find uh, your solution also useful for their analytics. So in this sense, uh, you can uh, achieve even double effectiveness uh, and also uh, get more insight from your finance department. Uh, the fourth ingredient is workflow selection. Uh, and here you would need to look at your workflows from the selective objective as a complex, average, and simple, but of course you can have more grades. Uh, and at certain point, you would need to draw a line uh, under which you say, okay, it's simple and repetitive enough that even a software can do that. Uh, and that would help you to uh, define better than what you want from the software, what you really want it to do. And uh, you should indeed automate simple and repetitive tasks, but you should not go into heavy automation projects unless, as I mentioned be just before, uh, you can have a backing from the finance, for example. So this project would be actually used not by just tax department, but by uh, other departments, and thus would prove to be useful and uh, beneficial for your organization as a whole. The fourth point is uh, functionality. Uh, and uh, here we do recommend talk to your peers. Uh, talk to your head of taxes that you know uh, talk to any managers and anybody that you know who is using similar software and ask their experience uh, and also ask the product because that would help you to have a more objective picture but also sometimes the products cannot be just find, uh, found on Google uh, or let's say if uh, a big four or any other consultant is pitching you uh, they would not have many things to offer uh, while when talking to peers, you might find out solutions that are not even tax solutions, but uh, just general documentation solutions, for example, that are used for other purposes, but can be used for tax purposes as well. Uh, we also do recommend uh, to have a clear list of functions that you want to have from the software. And of course, you're free to create kind of dream solutions that would do everything you want but also do define the uh, functionalities that are key for you. And when selecting a software, do not compromise on these functionalities. Even if you find something mm, nice looking or, uh, looking or it seems that it works better, uh, be objective in your selection. Only uh, in this case, you can uh, select the solution that would really fit your organization. Um, yeah, and the last component is project implementation, uh, where you would actually need to, need to define what you're going to do to implement the project uh, once you selected the package. And what would be helpful here definitely is to create a business case uh, that you can present to your CFO or other stakeholders. Uh, because again, if you can prove that uh, the solution that you selected is not just uh, another budget spend, uh, but really something that is uh, beneficial from cost and other perspectives. Uh, but also do think that how this solution can be combined with uh, outsourcing or core sourcing. Uh, because as I mentioned, sometimes solution by itself uh, is not really an answer. Uh, in this sense, uh, think about that uh, you should have a dedicated person for this project as well. Uh, 
because from our experience uh, within the tech department, there should be a certain manager who can dedicate at least 50% of their time uh, during the implementation phase. Uh, and also be then a kind of internal uh, support and uh, help desk for the other employees who are working with the software. Uh, otherwise, uh, you of course can outsource uh, this kind of uh, support to your consultant, but again, you need to make sure that you have really somebody dedicated to it. Otherwise, the implementation can take unnecessarily long time. Uh, of course, as and for any project, you would need uh, to define fundamental uh, goals. So what do you really want to achieve? And if you, at certain point uh, during the implementation, implementation realize that uh, you do not achieve these goals, uh, you would need to come back uh, again, back to your objective, and think what went wrong, and uh, maybe repair it during this uh, phase. Uh, and uh, with regards to execution, uh, we, of course, strongly suggest to have uh, deadlines and uh, project deliverables that you expect. Uh, then you can track the implementation uh, quite efficiently and, of course, implement the solution in a, yeah, in a quite uh, quick manner. Uh, by the way, uh, we forgot to tell you that you can ask your questions uh, in the chat box that you see uh, in your GoToWebinar. So please feel free to ask questions, and we will answer them uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, we will now move to the example, uh, where the first case study uh, is about the company that uh, wanted to implement a, a tool uh, called Hyperion. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, they, they had a Hyperion for financial management as ERP system. Uh, and they wanted to automate country-by-country uh, -country reporting and also transfer pricing calculation. Uh, the tool was selected and the tool proved to be efficient. And they expected benefits uh, for, from this tool were that it would decrease compliance costs because the company would get rid of the uh, Excel calculations. Uh, it would also ensure integrity of data. Uh, simplify calculations and, of course, reduce the time the internal team spends on this kind of task. Uh, the project has started and uh, the company did perform uh, the mapping of data for the software. They did define output. Uh, they also knew that they can import this data from their ERP. Uh, however, the issue appeared uh, at the source data. Uh, why? First of all, because uh, for the uh, efficient cost calculation, the company uh, needed a certain granularity of data uh, of the expenses in order to allocate this kind of cost uh, in the right bucket. However, this granularity just did not exist. Uh, and uh, when they asked uh, their finance department to, to support uh, obtainers of such data, uh, unfortunately, the finance department uh, was not supportive and uh, did not provide uh, yeah, any kind of uh, source for this data. In addition, uh, when the, some compromise was achieved uh, on uh, the data granularity, uh, it appeared that the finance department does not want to uh, give access to ERP system uh, because of the uh, certain security uh, reasons. So in the end, unfortunately, the project did not come through uh, just for the reason that the transfer pricing team did not have a backing from the finance team. Uh, and this, yeah, this is the, the case where uh, if you don't, uh, yeah, don't cooperate uh, with the other departments, the very good automation project can go very wrong, and not because of the software itself, but for other reasons. Uh, another key study that uh, I want to present to you is uh, about apparel company uh, that decided to uh, automate preparation of local files. And uh, the company does not have uh, one ERP system, but rather lots of them, and the information is coming from Excel spreadsheets. Uh, in addition, the core team is rather small, so it includes the head of tax and uh, two transfer pricing managers. 
So, of course, the objective is uh, to minimize the time spent on preparation of uh, local files and also review from local sites. Uh, what the team expected from the software is that would, it would increase uh, internal efficiency, uh, decrease compliance costs, and also would help them to standardize documentation, uh, and also would help them to avoid local team from uh, changing uh, certain information in the local files where they uh, were not really asked to change. So this company actually developed the tax technology plan, uh, and they did allocate responsibilities uh, within their uh, group, and they also realized that they can involve uh, legal department and also business departments uh, to provide them with certain information. Uh, in addition, uh, they uh, selected certain functionalities that they want software to perform. And while doing uh, vendor selection, uh, they were doing it in a very objective manner uh, in the sense that they were given uh, scores uh, for each functionality that they have seen from one to ten. Uh, and, but they also uh, plan uh, to do then further uh, certain weighting, so to uh, understand which functions are key for them and that should have a bigger weight, and those that are, uh, yeah, that they want but are not maybe uh, that important. Uh, in, uh, yeah, in essence, this project is still ongoing. Uh, but the team has a much better understanding of their own organization and how they can work more efficiently also when cooperating with local team. Uh, and for sure, they are selecting the software that would really fit their needs and would help them to achieve expected benefits. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask and we will be happy to answer. Uh, otherwise, uh, please uh, contact us. Uh, through our website or on the telephone number that we see. And we would be happy to help you to develop your tax technology plan uh, or advise you on uh, vendor selection process. Thank you for your attention and uh, we'll see you next time.